Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. This is a news heavy day, so let's jump right into it. In an interview with CNBC on the 11th of July, Bart Smith, who is the head of digital assets for Susquehanna International Group, expressed his opinion that Bitcoin is the best bet for cryptocurrency investors. The Wall Street honcho called Bitcoin as the currency of the internet, while predicting the large-scale implementation of the cryptocurrency in various fields. Smith also went on to comment that the Bitcoin mania that occurred during late 2017, early 2018, according to him, even after all the other coins enjoyed the price hike during the boom, only Bitcoin has the functionality to actually sustain in the market right now. He believes that users will flock to Bitcoin rather than to its alternatives because of its wide market adoption and appeal. Furthermore, he feels that the field of technology is volatile, and if users don't get what they want, they will move on to a product that will fulfill their requirements, a reason why Bitcoin is dominating the market. I have a couple of thoughts. He said, if you're looking at other use cases, smart contracts or lightning network or those different technological advancements, I think people are coming to realize those things are very difficult and aren't coming any time soon, end quote. Speaking about why Bitcoin will be adopted by the masses, he said... It is a currency of the internet. I would say it is digital gold. It's a cross-border money transfer which people use. And if those are two use cases today, it's hard to imagine Bitcoin losing those two use cases versus the field, end quote. Bitcoin makes it easy for people who live in different countries to conduct cross-country transactions with minimal hassle. Smith realizes this fact and further uses it to make his case for Bitcoin. He stated once again... They use Western Union, traditional banks, it is slow and it is expensive, and there are people that can stop you from sending that money, whether that's good or bad. With Bitcoin, I can send money, it's fast, cheap, and frankly, no one can stop me, and another quote. The financial executive also feels that if the price of Bitcoin falls to the $5,000 level, it will invite more investors. As of 12th of July, Bitcoin was priced at 6100 blah, 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 with the cap of, um, you know, you don't need to hear the exact price of Bitcoin at this moment. Uh, so we had news about a day ago, give or take, I'm sure pretty sure it was a day, where the other guy was talking about how he thinks that Ethereum is the uh, number one choice for investors. It should be the number one choice for investors. A lot of what he said and what I was quoting him as saying um, is not correct. Um, one of the main arguments that... <clears throat> One of the main arguments for Bitcoin at the moment right now is that Bitcoin is number one because it does what other coins cannot, but other coins can do exactly what Bitcoin can do, and they're usually faster. Uh, if Bitcoin exploded one day and no longer existed, we would still be able to send money uh, quickly with Ethereum, with Litecoin, with Cardano, with just about every other coin. Um, and a lot of these coins are actually... Some of them are like seven or 800 times quicker than Bitcoin. Um, what I think is happening is is a lot of these these like major major uh head investors or whatever you want to call them the the higher ups in the cryptocurrency world um the sentiment right now in the market is is that the market is supposed to go up relatively soon we have time frames of now august and september i'm sure you've heard this same exact song when i was talking about this from february to may as of now, these are the, the time frames that things will go back up. And I think the people who have the heaviest Bitcoin wallets are trying to make sure that other people have not forgotten the name of Bitcoin because there was something else that came out a couple of days ago. It was talking about um, Google Trends and how other coins are actually outpacing Bitcoin when it comes to people searching for them. There were actually more searches for uh, a while on the Internet, people searching more for Tron than they actually were for Bitcoin. Like I said before, um, a lot of people are moving towards altcoins because not only of the promise, uh, but because of the the price of these coins in comparison to Bitcoin. I said before in another video uh, that Bitcoin is expensive. I didn't mean like no one can afford it. I saw people actually got offended by that. Um, I meant in that when you look at the price of Bitcoin in comparison to Litecoin or even to Ethereum or even to XRP or Cardano or even Tron, in comparison, the other coins seem like more of a value. So this is why this is kind of happening. Um, even a lot of things that are supposed to be happening on the not even Bitcoin network within Bitcoin, as far as like Lightning Network, uh, we probably won't have that for another two years. And Bitcoin isn't the uh, greatest platform that we have right now for smart contracts. Uh, but this is... 
uh, there seems to be a, a war going on, uh, and it's specifically between Bitcoin and Ethereum. If I find any more articles like this, I'm sure there will be tons over the next couple of weeks over exactly um, who is uh, or which is the greater coin. I will definitely uh, tell them to you, give them to you, show them to you, uh, because I've been reading too much, uh, too many things like this over the last couple of days, even as everyone is trying to um, pump Bitcoin back up. Uh, to be the uh, best cryptocurrency that we have on the market. So Robinhood is in the news today. Rapidly expanding fintech unicorn, Robinhood has added Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin to its growing stable of cryptocurrencies that users can trade on the popular stock trading app. The commission fee free... <laughs> Stock trading app on Thursday announced it had onboarded its 5 millionth user, making it another milestone for the firm, which achieved a $5.6 billion valuation in May at the conclusion of its $363 million Series D funding round. In tandem with this milestone, Robinhood added full support for Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin to its Crypto, wow, cryptocurrency trading service, uh, which is currently available in 17 states and um, facilitates Bitcoin and Ethereum trading. Perhaps even more significantly, the firm also announced that it plans to add support for coin transfers, likely confirming reports that crypto that the company is building an in-app cryptocurrency wallet. At present, users can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on the brokerage platform, but cannot deposit withdraw or transfer them. I heard a lot of people say that Robinhood is actually, um, what's the word? Like visually, it's apparently very nice. It's um, relatively easy to use, but a lot of people are taken aback when they realize that they cannot withdraw or deposit cryptocurrencies into them. But apparently I'm assuming they have gotten a couple thousand. If they had 5 million people who just joined their platform, I can only assume at least 15,000 people were probably messaging them hey, saying, hey, I would like to withdraw my money from your platform. Users both inside and outside of markets where Robinhood crypto is currently available can continue to add 16 cryptocurrencies to their portfolio wishlist. And the firm has said that it plans to continue to expand the list of crypto assets trading that are going to be available. Armed with its hundreds of millions of dollars in funding, as well as its successful equities trading platform, the company has said that it doesn't intend to turn a profit on cryptocurrency trading anytime soon. Rather, it will continue to operate the service as a break-even venture designed to build its market share and help it become the world's largest crypto platform. I believe it says somewhere around here that they're also trying to get a uh, yeah, national uh, banking license. Let's see if this ends up happening. A lot of other places are definitely trying to... Um, what What did I say a couple months ago? Sorry, I feel like I just screamed into the mic. Sorry about that. Literally what I said a couple months ago, I said something really weird is happening in these cryptocurrency companies that they feel like they're becoming banks. And now this is like the fifth or sixth company that's actually trying to get a banking license. I'm... Once we have an SEC uh, ETF approved in the cryptocurrency space... The theory is you can't stop the flood from then happening once, you know, once one gets approved, the other ones will kind of get approved. Once they allow some type of cryptocurrency company to actually become a bank, this is why the Litecoin or uh, what's it called? Uh, Litecoin Foundation news is also significant. I, uh, I understand that Litecoin, the coin itself, didn't buy a portion in the bank. It was the Litecoin Foundation who was headed by Charlie Lee, who is the creator of Litecoin. Um, once any of these companies become a full bank or allowed to become a bank, I think we're going to see an incredibly different cryptocurrency space because it'll be a lot more, um, they'll be regulated, obviously, but it'll be a much friendlier place for people who are trying to build crypto startups or who have crypto, um, businesses because they've been having so many problems with them over the last couple of years. Next up, Ripple is in the news. So I didn't think that this was that significant, uh, but ab around nine different websites uh, told me that I was wrong. Real-time gross settlement, cryptocurrency exchange and remittance network Ripple has announced the addition of Kahina Van Dyke to its leadership team as the new senior vice president of business and corporation development. The banking and technology veteran will focus on driving new strategic partnerships for Ripple across the global financial services industry. Van Dyke most notably led global teams at traditional financial institutions like MasterCard and Citibank. However, she most recently served as the leader of Facebook's global financial services team 
in addition of Van Dyke to Ripple's leadership te- seems to fit the San Francisco based startup's goal of revolutionizing the traditional banking system and continually forging new partnerships with traditional financial institutions. The Ripple team said, and I do quote, she also understands the importance of bringing leading, leading brands together through partnerships. Van Dyke has forged relationships between Facebook and many noticeable companies, Citibank, PayPal, TD, Ameritrade, Visa, Western Union, and others to give people in Asia, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and North America easier access to their bank accounts and the ability to send payments on the platform. This is her. They also continued on saying, she also led the partnership with MasterCard to offer micro merchants in Africa the ability to enable digital payments through the social media platform. The accumulation of these kinds of initiatives has led to better consumer experiences, emerging business models, and new distribution channels across more than 50 countries. Ripple's announcement of its new edition may come as welcome news to fans of the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap. For a company known for its high-profile partnerships at Rapid Clip, Ripple has been relatively quiet this summer. We spoke about why they're probably quiet. It has to do probably with the three lawsuits, the SEC thing that's going on, um, them trying to... Um, Brad Garlinghouse still said that when they received their 200th, what was it, partner, uh, that they would start to uh, you know tell us more about what was going on. But he said that at one point, I think uh, Ripple was actually in the news like every day and a half and they had constantly had three new partnerships one new partnership two new partnerships i think he got tired of going on cnbc and also giving this news um but yeah like i said i didn't think this was that significant uh, but apparently it really is i mean to be fair if she has relationships with all of these um other uh countries and companies and parts of the world it is probably a um good step for them like there are a lot of people who are or were in, in traditional finance before who was slowly moving to the cryptocurrency side. This is still why I believe in the cryptocurrency space. If all of these people, all of these people who have moved over to the cryptocurrency space were bad mouthing crypto, I would feel a bit different about it. But the fact that we have now 10, 20, if not 150, 200 uh, people who are from the um, banking sector who have now moved over to the cryptocurrency side of the world. This only helps to, I mean, realistically, if you have someone who knows all of these companies, has worked with all these companies, worked with these, these banks, other countries around the world, um, and they can go to meetings with them if they know the heads of state, um, it's fairly easy to then tell them to start using X Current or start using X Rapid or start using X Via. Um, it's kind of the way that it goes. But like I said, um, I wasn't going to really talk about this because, you know, it's uh, didn't seem that important to me, but I saw this on just about every single website that I went to. So there you go. Next up, eToro is in the news. The UK head of eToro has revealed how many crypto assets the social trading platform is looking to add and criticize reporting on blockchain technology by mainstream media. In an interview with News BTC, he said that the recent bear market has been a blessing in disguise for crypto companies. UK Managing Director Iqbal Gandham, hope I said that correctly, said that eToro are or is looking at six new crypto tokens to add to their platform, of which he expects four or five to be added. Currently doing due diligence on the new assets, he said that it depends on the nature of the coins and the nature of the teams over whether or not all the tokens will be added. I want to speculate so hard on what the six new or rather four or five new coins uh, could actually be, but I won't do it in this video. Gandham also departed from the usual rhetoric of the 2018 bear market by claiming that it has enabled crypto companies and exchanges to cope with the recent demand and update their systems. That is actually... The truest thing I think I've ever read in this entire market. Um, for those who were around last summer, I'm sure you realized we had problems with Poloniex. We had problems with Coinbase. We had problems with Kraken. We had problems with, I think, every single crypto exchange that was out there. And we had, it got to the point where not only was Bitcoin backed up by 200,000 transactions, I think Ethereum was backed up by around 50,000 transactions. Um, and then we had crypto exchanges that were trying to do updates. And instead of their update taking 24 hours, like they told customers, the updates were taking like a week and a half. And a lot of people, it was really difficult. It was a difficult time. I'm sorry for laughing. It's funny looking back at it. Um, so many people were talking about that every crypto exchange at once was becoming a new Mount Gox. All hope was lost. All money was lost. Um, so the fact that prices have gone down and demand has gone down um, and people aren't opening new accounts as quick as they were before, this has actually given 
exchanges a lot of time to update their systems. If they have not updated their systems properly by the next bull market, that is their fault. I don't know if they're listening. Hello, if you are. You guys have had more than enough time. We've had such a negative sentiment in this market for quite a while in 2018. If they haven't updated their systems by now, by the next bull market, and should Bitcoin hit 20, 30, $40,000 again, and systems aren't updated and we get more uh, backlogs and stuff like that, that is their fault. Gundam told News BTC, <clears throat> most exchanges will concur that the industry has needed the low prices, which are a breathing space that the industry needed. We struggled to keep up last year. Yeah, they did. This year has been a blessing in disguise. The MD took aim at mainstream media, which has taken a skeptical view on cryptocurrencies, calling them a speculative bubble, which will be wiped out. He criticized the three main targets of volatility, money laundering, and it being determined a Ponzi scheme. Gundam said, we need to change the sentiment surrounding crypto assets. It's an amazing innovation. We keep hearing the incorrect arguments. Email took 35 years to develop. We're only eight or nine years into the game. Give it four or five years before mainstream innovation. eBay has scalability issues. Amazon has scalability issues. I hope these reports move away from that tired commentary on crypto, end quote. What a lot of people don't realize is that that is completely correct. I get quite, I'll show you guys something in a second, but I get quite frustrated um, when I'm watching. I try to watch <clears throat> not just cryptocurrency news and stuff like that, but also try to watch, you know, mainstream news if you want to actually use that term, uh, I, traditional news outlets to see exactly what's going on in the world and also to hear about what's happening in finance because I'm very interested in what's happening with the current stark, mo stark market, stock market and the going up and down, blah, blah, blah. When it comes to it, the people who are on, um, they only say the exact same things. It took us about three or four years to get away from people um, talking about Mt. Gox and talking about Silk Road. Silk Road was in the news for so long. And even within the cryptocurrency space, it was news for maybe about two weeks. Uh, but for some reason in the mainstream, it took about two and a half years. All they could constantly say every single time that someone went onto television to talk about Bitcoin and to talk about cryptocurrencies, especially when we got new cryptocurrencies, they would always ask, well, can you buy drugs with these new coins? And the, 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 the person sitting there would look at them like, why are you asking if you can buy drugs with Ripple or if you can buy drugs with Ethereum? It's not even a, you know, a mention in our space anymore. But now the thing that they're constantly talking about is it comes down to money laundering, um, the entire know your customer thing. Um, <clears throat> the Ponzi scheme thing is another thing that I won't even really step into because I'm sure you've heard the entire thing before. Uh, but also the speculative bubble and that it will be wiped out. There was another article that I do not have on this video where someone mentioned he said there are three possibilities that something that was going to happen to the cryptocurrency space and in particular to bitcoin he said that he predicts that one of the main things that is possibly going to happen to bitcoin is that bitcoin will die and that it will die at 43 dollars i don't know how death at 43 dollars is even possible i assume death is zero dollars but he said 43 dollars this is his belief he said there are other things that could possibly happen but he is expecting or anticipating that $43 will be the point of death for Bitcoin. Um, so I'm going to show you something. It's not as relevant to cryptocurrencies, but it actually kind of is. It actually does have nothing to do with cryptocurrencies. Um, this is an article that's online. It says 25 years is actually two years old. It's 25 years on. Here are the worst predictions um, ever about the internet. Um, it's called the website is newstatesman.com. I'm sure you could find it if you just Google 25 years on. Here are the worst ever predictions about the internet and I'll scroll through some of it. I'm not going to read it because uh, it's a, quite a long article. Um, I remember when I was growing up, not that you guys probably care, but when I remember when I was growing up and the internet first started launching 94, 95 when I was a little kid. And I remember everyone kept on criticizing the internet saying that things would never, you know, this would never take off. I remember I had teachers who were very upset saying that the internet could not replace them, that no one would ever be buying things on the internet. There was just no way to use it. And they even got upset when we had um, internet classes. I don't know if you guys ever even had like computer classes or people still even have those now. The point is, um, is that this article actually goes through the things that people said uh, when they were talking about that, um, saying that these people are predicting that we'll soon buy books and newspapers straight over the internet. And they said, oh, uh, sure. And you kind of go through it and you realize the correlation between cryptocurrencies because for some reason I don't understand. And I hope I, I've said this to, to me and my friends. I hope when I am 
85 years old and I have a hovercraft and I'm floating around somewhere that I am not rejecting the latest technology. Um, for some reason, people always seem to think that new technology will just not make it, that new websites that we have are simply going to end up dying, uh, that anything that we have that's new, that could be revolutionary. If you have a chance, like I always say, um, this isn't even do your own research, it's kind of like do your own fun, find fun things. Um, you can actually find articles from when the telephone was invented, newspaper articles that people still have, that they photocopied and put into the internet, where you can see that people said that the telephone was never going to make it. People said that they thought the telephone was a fad. They said, who would need it? We have Morse code. Why, why, would, why would I need to contact someone on the other side of the world immediately? What, what purpose does this have? People said this about television. People said this about color television people actually said that they thought that color television had no point at all why would anybody want to see things in color when they could look at the beauty of black and white on their televisions this was said for just about every single thing people also said this about the car they said that they thought that horses and carriages were more efficient and they got around a lot easier and you could go over mountaintops and cliffs with them because if you remember how old cars used to look couldn't really do much with them the point is, um, I used to get upset, or not upset, I used to get annoyed when I would read articles like that or people would talk about that on TV, about exactly how they thought about uh, the cryptocurrency world. And now all I do is laugh because it's going to be one of the strongest I told you so's in the entire world. I've told you guys before, um, I love my friends and family to death, uh, but I've told so many people about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and none of them, one of them, probably listened out of hundreds of people and it's going to be something. Think about where you are right now in your life. Okay, think about where you are right now and then think about 2010 where you were. Imagine if you had gotten into Bitcoin and then where you are right now. You are now into cryptocurrency in 2018. It is expect expected heavily that by the year 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, around three to five years time that cryptocurrencies will be so mainstream that the price of Bitcoin could potentially be $1 million dollars. Think about all the people who are talking negatively about cryptocurrencies and what you will be able to say to them. I mean, don't be mean, but you guys kind of get what I'm saying. Um, it's just always interesting to kind of look back every single time that some new technology comes out. People think that it's useless. The fact that it takes sometimes four to five to six business days or even days in general to send money through a banking system to someone on the other side of the world and it takes you 14 and a half seconds to send money with cryptocurrencies is probably one of the coolest things that we have in our entire world. And the fact that people are trying to digitize assets on blockchains, which are also only nine years old. And all these other things are happening with cryptocurrencies as far as like payments and uh, whatever. Uh, the point is, uh, we are in the midst of something in absolutely incredible. And we are going to be the same exact people in 1995 who told their friends, get into the computer, make your own website, because you are definitely going to be making money on it. And those friends told them, nope, you're absolutely crazy. I know a couple of people who have been told by their friends and family, not me in particular. I don't, I don't know if they've called me crazy. They might have. Uh, but a lot of other people I've noticed in the comment section below who were saying that their family members definitely called them crazy um, and then started calling them when Bitcoin hit around $15,000 uh, trying to borrow money from them. So all that I'm going to say on it, I didn't mean to spend that much time on it, but it was nice. Uh, pretty much, you know, I like talking about these things. I'm sure you guys know that I definitely like to ramble on. Um, don't ever fret when you hear people talking bad about the cryptocurrency space. They don't understand what's happening. They don't want to understand what's happening. And they're going to be the exact same people who missed out on the train. Next up. <laughs> Stellar Lumens is, that is a really intense photo. Stellar Lumens is in the news. Stellar Lumens is known for its modesty, low but loud. The coin has launched and built several projects on its network. On the 12th of July, Stellar Lumens announced that the cryptocurrency payment network Tempo is creating the biggest payment network of any authorized cryptocurrency exchange internationally. They said, and I do quote on Twitter, Tempo, the crypto payment network simplifying the exchange process from crypto to fiat, is creating the largest payment system or network of any licensed crypto exchange globally, end quote. Stellar Decentralized Exchange, also known as Stellar DEX, is used by Tempo. The payment network operated on the Stellar DEX is backed by the Stellar Network. Using Stellar's network, one can build mobile wallets, banking tools, smart devices, and more technical payment te techniques. 
Despite Stellar being a complex distributed system, its integration is not recorded to be complex. Located. <laughs> Tempo simplifies the exchange process from cryptocurrency to fiat and is currently creating the largest payment network in the world. Tempo brings ease to cryptocurrency trading by facilitating the process on its online platform and mobile application. We do not hear that much about Stellar, so this is kind of cool that they actually um, have a Tempo, have announced Tempo, are creating Tempo, that Tempo has been released. Um, this is still another... Uh, what's it called? Another exchange is being built by another coin. I assume, I think I said this before, no, remember? Um, we're going to probably have around three to five crypto exchanges that are going to be built on top of every single coin, which is going to be great. Um, you know, uh, competition is always good. It, it's still left to be seen exactly which one will survive, you know, because we don't have all of them yet. Uh, but very good news for Stellar Lumens and the Stellar Lumen team. They are actually very quiet, but they still do a lot of stuff in the background, and then we end up hearing like a whole avalanche of news from the stellar team all at once last up the race among crypto custodians to a secure high-end clients is growing fiercer by the day ledger the france-based wallet and custody startup is ramping up the number of cryptocurrencies it supports to meet the demand for multi-coin solutions particularly from institutional investors Revealed exclusively to Coindesk, the company will add support for new crypto assets on the first Tuesday of each month, starting in August, with a goal of having more than 100 supported by the end of 2019. Currently, Ledger's products and services handle only about two dozen tokens, and this week's this week, it added support for Tron and Zcoin, XZC. I have never heard of that coin in my entire life. The move is yet another sign of how the cryptocurrency industry is rapidly evolving, with an ever-widening array of assets to choose from and big money players nosing around for investment opportunities and influencing companies' business decisions. While Ledger, founded in 2014, is prim primarily known for its hardware wallet and corresponding app for individual Bitcoin users, CEO Eric Lau... Chevke, I think I said it correct, La Chevke, cited its newest, um, newer business lines, which offer custody services to hedge funds and other big players as the driver behind this Token Tuesday initiative. He said, if we want to sign those institutional customers, we don't have a choice. We have to support the top 100 cryptos minimum. For similar reasons, BitGo recently supported or added support for 57 Ethereum-based assets to its custody services for institutions. Um... This is, I'm hoping, I'm sure they hope as well that Coinbase in particular, that they actually get their banking license and their security license because everyone else is passing right by them. Um, it's well known that there's more than one cryptocurrency right now. There's more than four or five of them. I'm sure, um, I wonder if if Coinbase gets nervous at any point. Um, they know that they're like kind of the market leader, but if someone will kind of usurp them at some point because... There are so many other companies and institutions and stuff like that who are adding more coins. And Coinbase is still just kind of sitting back, um, just adding one coin like every six or seven months. Anyway, the point is um, Ledger is actually kind of cool. I know a lot of people who use them. They do like Ledger. I think they also just released some type of desktop wallet type situation. I think, I'm pretty sure you can Google it. You'll all be able to find it. Um, but the fact that they'll be adding 100 coins, or rather a couple of coins every Tuesday is incredibly great news. Um, I like the Ledger team. They don't seem fake or phony, so that's always a good thing. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are having or have had a great day, depending on when you're listening to this. Thank you once again for all of the support. I do appreciate it more than you could possibly know. Um, I'm, I never know how to finish these. I, I, I need like a chart telling me how to finish these. Whatever the case might be, I will talk to you all soon. See you.